Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game preview, another special Kickstarter preview. And today I'm very excited to check out Kingdom Rush Rift in Time from Lucky Duck Games. This is for two to four players. Age is 12 plus, it'll take about 60 to 90 minutes to play. And in Kingdom Rush Rift in Time, this is based off the uh, very popular app, which is a tower defense game. So this is going to be a cooperative tower defense game where you are tasked with stopping big bad guys coming into your kingdom and, well, destroying your kingdom. You have a certain number of health points you'll be able to do but luckily you're going to have militias and bombardments and archers at your arsenal you'll be able to upgrade them and you're going to try to work together to puzzle together the different pieces in order to defeat all the bad guys lots of cool stuff going on in this game so let's open it up and i'll show you how it works Alrighty then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of kingdom rush before we get started i want to mention obviously this is a prototype i have right in front of me so take everything you see here with a grain of salt uh, i was only able to play through the first three scenarios that's because that's all that's included in here and everything is obviously going to have upgraded components so uh, first and foremost we have our handy dandy rule booklet slash our handy dandy scenario booklet which will be about 26 pages at least my Mine was grand total, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's just absolutely marvelously done. This game looks terribly, terribly complex. I mean, look at all that stuff. Look at all that stuff! Uh, but it's actually not, and I can give you a really good feel for how to play the game, at least the first scenario, uh, and tell you about the second and third scenario, no problem. So in Kingdom Rush, what you're going to be doing is you are going to be defending your kingdom, and your kingdom is going to be all the way down here. You don't actually have a physical kingdom, you can't see it. But what's going to be happening is waves and waves of bad guys are going to be coming towards your kingdom. And your job is to use the cards, and you'll have cards over here that you're going to be able to get, uh, and also you'll start with some, in order to stop them from attacking you. So let's go ahead and show you some of the components, and then we'll get into the gameplay. Because as you can see, there's lots of components. So first I want to mention that there's a whole bunch of components that we're not even using over here. Um, because they do deal with level 2, level 3, going up to 4 players. Uh, you're going to have a hero board right here, which is really nice. It's going to tell you the turn sequence. Uh, you'll have your hero here. You'll have one of these really nice little miniatures. And these, I think, are just the 3D printed ones. So I imagine the final ones are going to look even nicer than these. So yeah, take a gander at them. I know people love minis. Whatever. Um, but you're going to have your hero here. You'll also be able to unlock special abilities for your heroes. But right now, I'm just focusing on Scenario 1. I'll talk a little bit about Scenario 2 and Scenario 3 a little bit later. But you are going to want this here mostly before uh, the turn sequence spot, which really helps and the received tower spots which i'll show you about later and the starting cards so for one and two players and i have a two player game set up we're going to start with a militia a mage and an archer so we'll grab ourselves one militia one archer and one mage and then we'll say for this guy let's see what he has he starts with a bombard a mage and a mage so he has two mages and a bombard so let's talk about these cards right now. So how do these cards work? Well, actually, we'll just get into the first phase, because I think that'll be easier. So the first phase is play tower and hero cards. So this is where you and your teammates, because this is completely cooperative, are going to be placing your cards either down here or giving your cards to uh, the person on your uh, left. Now, if you place them down here, what's going to happen is you'll look at the symbol on the card and you will attack that. So if I put this right here... I can attack either this one or this one because it has an arrow and then it has another arrow. Whereas if I put this one right here, I would only be able to attack one away from me. Uh, so some of them will, and since these are archers, thematically they can attack here or here because they have more range. Um, I might also, and so I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and plop this piece right there. That looks like a good spot to put it. And now also the thing you need to note is you have to put it exactly at that position. So if I played it like this, for instance, I would have to play the piece so it was vertical like so and so we'll just do that so next we have this one right here which is the militia now the militia is a little bit interesting because the militia is actually going to send a soldier to go fight on a spot so this one will send one soldier but as you upgrade them they'll go to two three and four soldiers now soldiers are interesting because they can help you defeat a tray which will, which is what these are called but the really important thing they can do is slow something down and make it so it doesn't move. But your soldiers do die. So you know what? I actually am going to... I don't feel like we really need to make anything move. So I'm actually going to use one of the cool mechanisms in the game. And I'm going to pass this to 
the other guy. So I'm just going to put it face down right here, and I'll explain how that works a little bit later. So next we have a mage, and he's going to be doing uh, magical power, which doesn't really show up right now, but once we get to the portal, you'll see why having uh, a variety of different heroes helping you fight is important. A variety of different um, buildings. So, plus this one right there, and... Yep, we'll do this. So that looks pretty good right there. So now we'll take a look at this guy over here. Let's see what he's got. He's got a Bombard. He's got two Mages. So I kind of want to show you what happens if you upgrade a Bombard. So you know what the first thing he's going to do is he's going to give me this Bombard, put it right there, and he's not going to be able to play it, but you'll see why it's a good thing in a second. Then I'll play this one and this one. We can't really kill anything right now as far as I can see because these guys don't have the range to attack that one. So we would just put... Uh, one right here, and... Ooh, that's not the best. Uh, yeah, I guess one right here. Uh, when it comes to placing tiles, you don't have to put them exactly on the bad guys. You just have to make sure that they are on the board. They can't be, you know, off the side, obviously. So, that would be the end of Phase 1. We played our tower and hero cards. Now, if we were playing with heroes, you would have special cards, and your heroes could physically go onto the board, and they take up four spots, and they're awesome, and you can upgrade them with special abilities, and there's a whole bunch of different special abilities you can utilize. But we're not getting into that right now. Let's just keep going on the turn sequence. So step number two, you destroy the horde trays. So if you've covered all the monsters on a tray, you would destroy the horde trays. Unfortunately, we have not done that. So we skip on to the next one, which is advanced horde trays. So this one goes right here, and this one goes right here. Uh, and, well, I'll tell you about that later. So then we spawn new horde trays. So we take the top one off here. And these are randomly created at the beginning of the game. Uh, you have like a certain order you're going to put them in. But you're not, you're not exactly sure which one's going to come up. So now this is, this is why militia and other things are very important. Because this symbol right here means that these monsters speed things up. So instead of moving one space forward, they go two spaces forward. Now why that's bad is that if any of the trays get all the way to this bottom spot right down here. So they go and then they go here then that means that however monsters are uncovered is how much health you lose. And in this particular scenario, two-player scenario one, you only have seven health. So if you let like a whole tray go through, you're game over. So next, we have Upgrade Received Towered Cards. So this is one of the cool aspects of the game. I talked about how we passed these cards and we didn't actually play them. That's because now we can upgrade this. So this goes from being a level one bombard to... And artillery. And the artillery is going to give you a couple more options that you're going to be able to do. So you'll now you'll be able to attack at some weird angles. It's not the best card, but once you get to level 3, it actually is a pretty bomb card. Because you can pretty much attack in any a whole variety of different ways. It really opens you up. So you keep that right there. This guy, on the other hand, now has a militia that does 1 to a militia that does 2. Which is good, because I think we're going to need to slow some things down in a second. So, upgrade received hero cards. We pick up our tower cards now. So we pick up our used tower cards. So, boom and boom. And depending on how the round played out, you are not always going to have an even amount with everybody else. There might be times where you're like, you know what, nothing I really do is going to help me that much, so I'm just going to pass a whole bunch of cards to the player next to me, and you might only have one, one card to play. And that will happen from time to time, but you remember, it is a team game. So we pick up our tower cards and we buy tower cards and hero ability, step seven. And what that means is we can spend one uh, gem, one of the diamonds, to buy a hero ability, which you would just slot into your special abilities right there, but obviously we're not playing with that right now. And you can play two to purchase a level one card. Now that doesn't sound like a very good deal, you say. Well, here's the thing. Coming up next, we have the portal card. And the portal card is a really... This is this is the big bad guy. You have to beat the portal card in order to win the game. You have to beat the portal card and survive the round. And the portal card, when you attack it, sucks up your buildings. So you're going to need uh, more buildings than you're going to start with. So, yeah. Now, how do you get the diamonds? Well, that's a good question. When you defeat the... Um, here we go. When you defeat certain things you're going to gain gems and you can spend those gems obviously so you have to defeat the horde trays in order to gain the gems and that was the whole first turn like i just showed you a first turn this is a really simple game i'll play another one for you just because i really stick and like this game uh so play hat tower and hero cards let's see if my archers Ooh, they can almost defeat this guy actually let's see what this guy's got going on what does he have going on so um ba -da -ba -doo 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 -doo. He might go like this, I might go like that, which means that one is defeated. 
it would really be nice if we could you know what i'm actually gonna let him do that and then i'm gonna do this and the reason why i'm going to do this is because yeah we'll do that Oh, and I still have a mage, so we'll just throw it on willy-nilly and see if we get lucky. Actually, we're not going to get lucky. We have our artillery, so let's just go ahead and level this up to level 3, and you'll see why in a second. So we'll pass that over, and then we'll do our attack. So the mage is going to go <clears throat> like this. This guy is going to go like that, and this tower has been defeated! Yes! All the things are covered, so we are good. We have our archer. He'll just attack this one uh, right there. Let's see, get the piece. So he'll attack. Um, actually, you know what? I think he's going to attack this one right here, and you'll see why in a second. This guy is going to go... Um, I'm looking for... Oh, there it is. He'll go right here. Let's cover those two up. And then this guy with his two units are actually going to cover this and this, which means this piece is not going to move at all during the movement phase because we have the militia to block it, and we've covered up the super fast guys, which is awesome. Uh, but anywho, this one would uh, now die, so we destroyed the horde trays, all this stuff goes off the side, and uh, this is a really cool system, by the way, if you want to see how it works. You just kind of pop it out with your finger, and we would get ourselves one gem. But, I'll just skip ahead, you'll see what the portal does. So this is really rough, um, and it has, so these ones cannot be attacked by the mage, they can't be attacked by magic. This is not actually a spot you can attack, this just shows you that in order to attack this, you have to be attacking with a level 3 building. Which, you're like, what? A level 3 building? And the first time we played this, we thought we were going to get crushed. We actually very narrowly escaped, because we had to pump the brakes real quick and switch over to, um switch over to upgrading a lot but we were able to barely do it with the help of some militiamen who slowed things down but that's what the level three looks like and you're going to have a, and this is a level one card so that as they progressively go up they're going to get harder and harder and harder but anywho you're going to try and do that and if you can successfully defeat this and survive the round with, with having health left you will win the first scenario second scenario adds uh it adds the heroes which you'll be able to now move in and upgrade their special abilities and once you get to the third scenario you're going to have um, a different looking map because the this is double-sided as i'll show you and you can kind of make your own custom maps and there's going to be a whole bunch of scenarios i imagine and it also is going to introduce <clears throat> I don't remember if it's two or three, introduce the advanced, the level fours. So at level three, the big thing is it's going to let you start rotating the pieces, which is really nice, and level fours are just even better than that. Uh, but anywho, that's what you're going to do inside of Kingdom Rush. Alrighty then, Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time from Lucky Duck Games. What are my final thoughts? Alrighty then, Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time from Lucky Duck Games. So I want to start off by saying I'm giving this a preview. And normally when I do previews on my channel, I try to be very open and transparent about this. It's because I don't like the game. I want to assure you that is not the case with this. I absolutely already recommend this game to you. It is a great game and I can't wait to see what happens. The reason why I'm giving this a preview uh, is because I have not played the entire game. I've played the first three scenarios and I know there's going to be more scenarios, more cards, more this, more that. And in fact, the Kickstarter has already done just insanely well. So there's going to be a whole bunch of more stuff in the box. And since I haven't played the complete game, I'm not going to give it like a number and the pros and cons and all that sort of thing. But I will tell you what I do like about the game and why I will recommend it to you absolutely so first and foremost um ages 12 plus ignore that because i know a lot of people are going to be wondering about this i brought this in my classroom played it with a couple eight-year-olds they went nuts over it they said this is one of their favorite games i've ever brought into the classroom which is hundreds of games i mean literally hundreds of games they were crazy about it because they really like cooperative games because you know i don't take it easy on them uh they, they like the tetrisy aspect of it where you're trying to puzzle in the pieces and it's like oh i want this piece to turn but i can't do it because it's only level two and that's really cool they like the miniatures and there's uh the miniatures in the game which actually do look really stinking cool they loved when we added the hero abilities and then there was the choices of like you know we need to get this card you know we need to get this card and she's like well i kind of want to spend the gem to upgrade my hero and it's like but we need the okay okay it's a cooperative game you want to do that just go ahead and do that uh and actually she ended up being right in that particular instance but it does make for some interesting choices because the money is scarce in this game also the game is deceptively difficult it looks it starts off easy but then it really ramps up fast with the way they have the cards going in there uh, and yeah I, I i can tell you this if you're looking for a two to four player cooperative game I can definitely recommend this. If you're looking for a tower defense game, but in a board game board game form, I can absolutely recommend this. If you're looking for a family game, I can absolutely recommend this. And I probably said way too much because this is a preview. And normally in previews, I'm trying to keep my opinion out of it. 
but it's a really awesome game. Uh, much like Noir, which I absolutely love, and I later turned around and gave a Bower's Best Seal to with one of the expansions, um, since I don't have the full copy of the game, I don't feel comfortable giving it a full review. But what I can tell you is Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is freaking awesome. Just simple as that. This is one, sometimes, and, and this, is, this is a little bit behind the camera sort of thing, normally when you do a Kickstarter video and you're uh, a content creator like I am, obviously, you you just kind of expect to get a finished copy of kickstarter games that's just how it works and sometimes i don't really care like if they send it to me that's great i'm happy but if they don't uh you know whatever because the game the game didn't do it for me the game's not amazing or, or a variety of different reasons this is one of those games that as soon as the game starts shipping and be like hey 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 uh you, you remember i did that kickstarter video you think you could uh maybe, maybe send that my way because that's how excited i am to play through the rest of the stuff and they've already unlocked so many awesome things uh because i'm a little late to the show on the review preview but anywho that is kingdom rush rift in time one that i absolutely can recommend despite the fact this is a preview and i think i've just broken all of my own rules Turn it, Monkey duck games making me break my rules but if you enjoy what i'm doing please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below if you want to support the channel click on that little amazon associates link down below by anything on amazon throws a couple pennies my way really does help support the channel and in the comments below let me know have you ever played the mobile version of the game? For me personally, no, but after playing this, uh, I still have no desire to play it. I just, uh, I don't play too many games on my phone anymore. I try to get away from that and just play, you know, like video games on the console. But let me know in the comments below. Have you played it? And if enough people tell me it's great, then they'll probably convince me to get it and my wife will be mad at me. But let me know. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.